Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video on the channel. I am filming this one back to back with my CRKT Symmetry EDC update video and this is my entire knife collection. These are knives that I've been collecting since I was 18 years old. They are all legal to own in the UK and we'll start off with the ones that are legal to carry in the UK. So let's jump into it. All right guys, before we get started, let's just remind you to subscribe, like, and in the comments down below, let me know which knife you think looks the best. Which one would you own if you were into knives? If you are into knives, maybe you own some of them. Let me know down below, okay? The first one we are looking at is the CRKT Symmetry, just because it's the most fresh in my mind. This is a Richard Rogers design. It is 8CR13 MOV steel. It is a satin blade with a plain drop point style and it is a hollow grind and it is a 70 gram weight with glass reinforced nylon handles, deep carry pocket clip in anodized blue detailing and it is a 17.3 centimeter overall length, closed length is 10.6 and 16.9 blade. It's non-locking of course, it's a slip joint because that's what I said we were going to start with. <laughs> Next up, we have the Spyderco UKPK with glass reinforced nylon handles, a satin blade, drop point, and I believe it is a plain blade type. Doesn't say anything about the grind on this one. Black handles, wire pocket clip, spidey hole thumb hole to open, one handed opening, and jimping on the top there for your finger or your thumb, depending on how you want to get purchase. And it's got a decent decent size in the hand. And this is one that I've owned for a year or so now. Great little workhorse, easy to sharpen. Super convenient with the deep carry pocket clip. You don't have to worry about anyone finding that. Um, and it's a 98 gram total weight. And that is the Spyderco UK PK. This next knife is my first proper pen knife. However, it would probably be more just better described as a keyring knife. It's a very small Spyderco, very popular. This is the Grasshopper with stainless steel handles, 8CR13 MOV blade. It's got a satin blade, it's plain. It's unswept is the blade shape on this one. So you can see it kind of curves back up, if that makes sense and it is a total blade length of 5.9 centimeters overall of 12.8 not much not much bigger than my finger and it is a product weight of 39 grams you can buy this one from the Heaney and Haynes website for 29.95 i am not sponsored by Heaney and Haynes but i just think it's the best place to buy your knives to be honest this one is the Zero Tolerance 0230 in carbon fiber with blue detailing. If you watch my CRKT Symmetry video, you'll know that I'm not a fan of blue, but for some reason knife companies just always do their detailing in blue. But there you go. Maybe I could sand this one down as well. It never occurred to me, but it's not an in-your-face blue. It's not a chromed out blue. I quite like this one. It's a stonewashed blade finish with a Warncliffe blade. Like I said, the handle material is carbon fiber. Closed length is 9.3 centimeters. It's a nail nick knife and it is also a 90 degree stop. Nice and easy action. Overall length is 15.8. Closed length is 9.3. Blade length is 6.8. And this is the Zero Tolerance 0230. This is not a cheap knife. To buy it from heneyandhaines.co.uk or heney.com, should I say, right now is £178.95. I would not and have not spent that much money on a knife. I bought this over in Canada where with knives being cheaper in general in Canada and with the exchange rate, I paid well under £100 for this knife. So if you were to do that, that is what I would recommend if you have any family out there or anything like that in a country where these are more readily available, I would definitely recommend doing that. Let's get on to the next one. All right, so this one is probably the absolute goat of slip joint knives at the moment. This is the Benchmade Proper slip joint nail nick, and it, I have got some aftermarket flitanium copper scales on here with a nice patina, 
This is in S30V with a sheep's foot blade and it's blacked out as well. The scales that came with it were, again, freaking royal blue. So I had to, had to change them because I knew this was a knife that I could legally carry. I wanted to legally carry it. So I had to get rid of those blue scales. Again, not a cheap knife. On Heaney.com right now, you can pick one up from anywhere between £125 all the way up to £1,000. Now, if you don't know anything about Benchmade, they do what they called, uh, they, they, they manufacture their knives using a class system. Uh, and they have a gold class, which is where you're talking about like 18, like you're talking about precious metals, steel. It is the absolute goat in terms of materials. So that is the £1,000 knife, but 125 is roughly the right price. I bought this one in Canada again for well under £100 and it was actually on sale. The blue scaled version that I bought was on sale and I picked up these Flytanium scales uh, for probably 30 British pounds once you did the exchange rate. So super convenient. Again, it's got a 90 degree stop. So that is the Benchmade proper. This next one is the last slip joint we're gonna talk about. This is just a dirt cheap, I think it cost me about $12. If you're from North America, you might know of an outdoor store called Bass Pro. From what I can tell, and I could be wrong, I believe it's basically one of their own, one of their own brand knives called Redhead. And this is just a very small, sleek little slip joint. Absolutely naff in terms of quality, but super discreet if you wanted to take it out in public to open a package because you just bought something from a shop or whatever. The logo has actually fallen out. You can see it's missing. Glue on it wasn't very good, but super small, super discreet. You can drop that in your uh, fifth pocket on your jeans, the little one, and that thing is going to disappear. That is the red head in a traditional style slip joint with the brass and wood detail. So that was it for fully and completely legal carry knives. I've got a couple on, I've got one on here that probably would not cause you any trouble if you were caught carrying it. And it is the Giltec Ruck and it is a Stanley blade holder. Okay, multifunctional, multi-use Stanley blade holder. You put your thumb in this little divot here and then you can just push on the blade and push it out and there it is. Okay, so it's got this little retention bar on the back and that is how you deploy the knife. And of course, you can just take it out like any other Stanley blade, flip the blade over, slide it back in and away you go. Okay, it has got a flat edge slash pry edge on the back here. If you can see that, a bit difficult to make out because my little lanyard. It has also got a quarter inch hex bit on the back here, which I have actually used in practice and it works. You just pop your quarter inch bit in there and then you can use the whole, uh, the whole, the whole device as a screwdriver. It's also got a bottle opener on the top, of course, because what is an EDC item if it doesn't have a bottle opener? And I believe that's all of its little features. Super useful, carry it all the time. Really love this one. Super great that you can just swap out the Stanley blades. That is the Giltec Ruck and it's the V2 edition, which has the blade scraper and the slash flathead and the quarter inch hex bit on the back. So these next knives are not UK legal carry. These are just knives that I've collected over the years, some over here in the UK, but most of them bought over in the e well, North America in general, but mostly Canada. First one I'm gonna show you is a ridiculous item that I bought. It's super cheap and it's just, it's like a, it's like a prop from a video game. If you're into video games, this is basically a Karambit from Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Uh, they were at uh, Insomnia Festival. This company was at Insomnia Festival and they were, um, they were just selling replica knives. So here it is. This is a Karambit and this is it, stupid, ridiculous rainbow colors, but I just I just had to have it. I just did, I mean, look at this thing, it's ridiculous. It's replica, like it's not sharp, sharp, but it's also not blunt and it's got one hell of a point on it. 
so you could, you could do some damage, but of course it just stays in my drawer as a stupid little memory of a time I was at Insomnia. And this is by Fade Case. Okay, so you can check them out if you want to. No idea what the price is on retail. And this next one is a little tiny little Kershaw. This is the Kershaw Shuffle. It's just a little locking knife with a little thumb stud opening on it. So you can open it one handed. It's got a liner lock on it. So you just got to pull that open and then you can close it. Deep carry pocket clip. You could use that as a lanyard hole or you could use it to scrape if you wanted to. And then a bottle opener as well. But it's just a crappy knife, terrible blade steel, barely holds an edge. Bought it because it was about 20 bucks and I just use it as a little scrappy knife. On Heaney.com it is $29.95, blacked, uh, blacked out blade material and it is 8CR13 MOV and the blade thickness is 0.3mm, blade length is 6cm, so the Kershaw Shuffle there for you. This next knife is another Canada find, another cheap Canada find. This is the Smith & Wesson neck knife. So the company that make the famous revolvers that you might have seen in movies and video games, Smith & Wesson, they obviously make knives as well. And this is just a little neck knife. It did come with a chain so that you could obviously have it on your neck. Obviously not legal to carry. Never would carry a knife around my neck anyway, but here it is. It's got a kind of Tonto blade with um, some anodization, gray anodization, paracord grip, and it's just a little, you know, if you ever need a, a fixed blade for any particular reason, but honestly, I just picked it up because it was cheap, about 20 bucks, and I wanted it, to be honest. This next one is the Ninja Knife credit card knife, so you can fold this up so that it is a full, well, I wouldn't say a full-size knife, but let me just do that for you real quick. And I'll probably put some B-roll in of me actually doing it so you can see what I'm doing. It's absolutely awful. I don't know if you've heard of the other version of this knife by a guy called Ian Sinclair, I believe. I couldn't find it anymore. I used to have one. I had to throw it away because I accidentally took it to an airport. But this is it all folded up. And it's got a pretty nasty edge on it. It's not particularly sharp but it'll mess you up. This is the Ninja Knife. I'll try and find a link to put down in the description. I don't think it's on Heaney, but if it is, it'll be down there regardless. So this next one is from when I was 18 years old. Went on a trip to America with my parents and my family, and we went to a gun range to try that out as an experience, and of course they sold knives and all kinds of things that you would expect a gun shop or gun range to have, and I bought this. I have no idea what it's called anymore, but it's by Benchmade. It's a proper nasty knife. Got uh, serrations, half serrations on there. Or I'd say a third serration, probably. Quite a big knife, not messing around. Do not carry this, obviously. And it's got the spidey hole as well. So Benchmade managed to get a spidey hole on a knife, probably before Spyderco told them to stop. It's got a back lock back here, so you press that down and that's how you close it. This is just sentimental really, it's, I don't use it even around the house, it's just something that I keep in my drawer, just like most of these, I just keep them in my drawer, look at them now and then, take them out, sharpen them, take care of them, put them back in the drawer. So this is a bench made knife and again, I am not sure what model number it is or what name it is, but it's definitely one of their cheaper ones. <laughs> This one you would have seen in my CRKT Symmetry video. This is the Kaiser Sheepdog in a kind of baby blue FRN handles with a sheep's foot blade. And it is a 154cm blade. Nice flipper knife. Regular pocket clip, not deep carry or anything like that. Hollow backspacer with little rivets instead. Nice blue anodized detail on the pivot. And this is just a really nice, I just love this knife. The action on it is great. It's a cool shape, cool knife. On the smaller side, you know, it fits well into my hand. But it's just such a cool little knife. It's got this little detent on the end of the top edge, so you can prop a choke up on it for detailed work if you would ever need to do that. Maybe you're using it to cut something out of paper. I don't know. But that is the Kaiser Sheepdog. 
Sorry I haven't been reeling off prices for all of these knives. A lot of them I just don't know. And a lot of them I'm just going to put down in the edit. And you can also follow links in the description to where you could buy these if you wanted them. Again, these are all legal to own in the UK, but not all legal to carry. This next one is the first knife that I bought that was more on the more premium side, well over $100. It was on sale because I believe it's been discontinued. But this is the Zero Tolerance 0460 in black, brown, carbon fiber and titanium frame lock with a aftermarket deep carry pocket clip and a Persian style S35VN blade. Super nice action, super light. Just falls closed, super snappy, super smooth, major fidget factor on this one. And that is the Zero Tolerance 0460. We have the Kaiser Splinter in a very interesting titanium frame with a fully milled pocket clip. So it's a, so what that means is it's a solid piece of titanium and they just mill it down to make the clip with again, another frame lock, you can see it there. And this is another one that just falls closed. Beautiful, beautiful, easy mechanism. You can see it there just wobbling if I hold the lock open. So you can just flip it down, back flipper here. Boom, super aggressive little pointy stabby uh, shape and then it just falls closed. This is the Kaiser Splinter. Again, any links that I find where you can buy this for yourself or if one like it will be down in the description with a price as well in the edit. Super nice knife. Again, not the most expensive, but definitely not the cheapest. That's another pickup from Canada because you cannot get, sorry, that's one thing I didn't mention. You cannot get flipper style knives over here in the UK because it's just not worth it for the retailers to import them usually because they get pulled up, they get pulled by customs um, because inexperienced people that don't really know, they might open a knife like this and think it's assisted or spring loaded like a switchblade, which are illegal. They're not. It's just ball bearings and a frame lock and a flipper tab. And you can put in enough force that it doesn't fly open but if you, if you put in a bit of effort, it just flies open. And UK Customs seem to think these are switch blades, spring-loaded blades, or assisted opening blades, or even gravity opening blades, um, which are illegal. So uh, you know, all of my flipper knives, all of my knives with a flipper tab have been purchased from the Canada where even they're having trouble now, apparently. My most recent visit, they said they're also having trouble getting them across the border for the same reason. This one is 100% sentimental to me. I had it made up for as a groomsman present when I got married. Gave one to all my groomsmen. I gave one to my best man, and I also gave one to my brother-in-law. This one is just a knife that I managed to find on Etsy. Had it personalized with my name and obviously groom and then the date we were married and it's got a flipper tab, although it's not very good for flipping, but it also has thumb studs as well. Frame lock, wood detail, nice and cheap, cheerful and super sentimental. I'll have a link to where you could buy one like this in the links down below. And this one last but not least is by Benchmade. This is the Benchmade Freak with red anodized and framing detail and blacked out blade, axis lock, which is these ball bearing style locks here. You can see my thumb, my finger tapping the back of them. Super snappy. You can just flick it open, thumb stud opening, and then you pull the lock back and it just falls shut. If you hold the lock open, it just swings basically completely freely and then you let it go and it'll give you some resistance and then snap into place. I don't know if you saw that there. If you just watch the lock, it falls out and then snaps back in. Super nice knife, M4 steel, like I said, which is a super premium blade steel. 
and this is one of my most valuable knives to be honest in terms of actual monetary value and also one of my favorites anyway this is the benchmade freak thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this one let me know which knife you thought looked cool what you want to see more of maybe and i will catch you in the next one see ya